the tower. One. The tower where we live is a tall and lonely tower. Standing outside the limits of the city, it reaches into the white tufts of clouds from a huge expanse of land once used for potato farming. This tower, among other towers, has a name. It is popular by its name, Dream Tower. Sometimes I wonder about the dreams of this Dream Tower. Dreams of its architect, dreams of the masons who worked on it, dreams of the seller, and of the buyers of its apartments, and of the mafia which craftily squeezed the land out of wide-eyed farmers. The tower stands erect like the timeless portal of an arrogant crown. As I walk up its spinal stairwell at nights, pondering over this multitude of dreams, I know these are dreams which still linger in its labyrinths like ghosts. 2. There are times when I stand at the window of my apartment looking at the city where I was born, searching for symbols and patterns that I know exist beneath layers of rising vapor in the air of this city. The smog invariably clouds my vision. Sometimes I catch a glimpse of familiar bridges and a few monuments. Mostly I look at the airplanes taking off and landing incessantly and the cars that seem to glide on the highway that dives past the distant tower. The farmlands and wetlands around the tower look plundered and ravaged, destroyed by the monstrous man-made construction machinery, giving way to spectacular buildings, deluxe hotels and shopping malls. I tell a lot of people, not caring to hide the strain of pride in my tone. I live away from the city, amidst greenery and water bodies in clouds. I know this is a lie, yet I prefer saying it. It makes my acquisition look like a prize possession. Soon the ever-swelling concrete jungle will engulf everything. The nooks and corners, the parks and shady grounds by the lakesides, where I chased solitary beautiful girls during winter picnics long time ago. 3. I have a friend who is a film critic, progressive, well-read and talkative on all the matters on earth. I hope you understand what I mean. This guy, after eating a sumptuous meal at my place, summed it up. Sandy, this property makes you look like a man. Men are no longer known for their chivalry or by the charming ways they treat their women. Rather, when we talk of men coming back nowadays, they're actually referring to sedans resembling angry warplanes. My friend's words made me wistful for some time and ponder was I at all a man enough before taking my place in this tower? 4. My son and daughter have wonderful faces like those fluffy angels in a dream. I have been thinking, can one see such dreams in this tower? My wife who loves me like a magnificent queen and is my partner in all the crimes that I have committed till date was the one who made all the installations in our home. The wood-carved fine leather upholstered furniture, the ornate lighting, the embroidered carpets, and the stainless steel digitized contraptions to do this and that to perfection. My God, the things look so nice and cool and provides you with such deadly comfort that our home almost looks like the insides of a medieval fortress. 
In this cave, at times, floating on strange clouds, we play hide and seek, make fun of each other, quarrel, see horrendous films and listen to rock, and sleep and eat and defecate and party, coming and going, coming and going, day in and day out. Do we get bored in this tower? There is no definite way to tell you this. Because when we get bored, we skip channels, change our gym routine, my wife orders for new food, we try out avant-garde stuff in films and theatre, read poetry and make love on different beds, and even change drivers and servants. One night, the stars and the half-moon twinkled so brightly in the sky while the lights from the city looked sad and diffused. I was teaching electrostatics to my children. You must be aware how tough it is to teach adolescents. Something like charging of a gold leaf electroscope by induction. As I jumped into the most dramatic part of my discourse, my daughter furrows her brow, raises her hand and blurts, Sandy man, I have something to say. Although I felt irritated to the core, but you know, when this tiny, fiery woman has something to say, you can't stop her. My son feels agitated and almost taking my side, reacts sharply. Come, say what all you have to say, quickly. Don't you see Sandy man is making such a bright effort? Then my daughter asks me this question. Tell us, you sandy man, how far is the soul of the city from our town? My son becomes thoughtful at the question and as a rejoinder asks, How can one say, sandy man, where the soul of a city lies? Frankly, I feel like a charged electroscope and I end up saying, The city is so far away from us and its soul, my dear children, lies buried. And if at all you want to find it, you need to unearth a prickly riddle. At this point, my wife makes a glorious entry into the scene and declares, Sandy, let us all go and live by the side of a sinuous river. You promise to build a cottage on an enchanted shore during our courtship? Memory is something you are incapable of forgetting. And I marvel at my queen's memory, with which she strikes me almost every time at the right hour. The children start singing a meaningless song, boisterously breaking the dead silence of the night. Amidst this increasing cacophony, my tigress gives me a look, which tells me she will fall into my ferocious embrace the moment I leave all this mess and catch her. It happened just then. Our tower took off into the sky like a rocket. 5. When we do not feel like sleeping, which happens many a time, I tell them stories, mostly spooky stories. I told them one a few nights back. I got down from my car proceeded towards the elevator well in the tower. The tower consists of two elevator wells facing each other. We are the only residents in this tower, but the elevator cubicles were tirelessly waiting at ground zero for somebody to occupy their space. I feel very confused about which elevator to board. So I have made a principle of sorts. While descending, I will drive down the southern well, whereas on my way to the top, I will drive up the northern well. I board the northern cubicle, hungry and tired but happy to be back home. The doors of my elevator close, making an unpleasant sound, and I push the button for my floor. My eyes, by fleeting chance, fall on the opposite elevator with doors shut. 
it looks utterly glum and is melancholically illuminated by its fluorescent lamp it's vacant and at rest and i find in it a ball of smoke encircling like the ring of saturn as my elevator kick starts and rushes upwards i find the opposite elevator rushing upwards all of a sudden almost at an equal speed when we race past each other through the intervening floors i can sight the other elevator momentarily through the glass panels of our respective doors the emerging ball of smoke growing inside its somnolent chamber into something more concrete which i cannot readily grasp as we leave the sixth floor behind the ball of smoke was gone and instead i found a man standing in a grotesque posture looking vacantly at me he hardly moved his hungry gaze on me more intense with each passing floor once we had crossed the 10th floor the other elevator accelerated and crossed mine leaving me terror struck and suddenly i realized that this man almost looked like me he was my body double wore the same clothes and carried the same bag and file of papers it was this mesmerizing similarity that filled my soul with endless darkness was this man a heinous impostor was this man a terrorist would he harm my wife and children at last i reached the floor where i live my chest thumping and heaving against my frail rib cage my hands shook as i pressed the entrance bell a few seconds later our maid had opened the door when she found me standing in front of the door she instinctively turned around and rushed inside calling for my wife when she was turning i had glimpsed the shock in her eyes surprisingly i did not enter or make any move as if i was waiting for approval of others to enter my own home my wife came and the children followed she came to the door i saw a queer look in her eyes the children looked awestruck when she spoke she sounded restrained and withdrawn what a look alike unbelievable nobody can believe this my dear man don't harm us my husband is back at home he has gone to the washroom to take his bath tonight we will leave to see the mother of all rivers as you would know it is a long and a tedious journey spare us my good man if you need anything anything from us i'm willing to give if you want our home in this tower you can have it we will be leaving for good 6 my wife belongs to lands where fables are written i snatched her from a fable and made her mine in doing so i made her the heroine of one fable and the vamp in another there are days when we go to the terrace of this tower soaking sun in our burnt out bodies standing taller and looking breathlessly at the city which feels like a crouching demon inching towards us will we feel like immigrants forever on this planet to douse our eternal fears we pray we pray like devotees are required to pray we end all our prayers with one line let this city keep some space for our children whose faces resemble those fluffy angels in a dream